Hello everyone. So there is a lot of misinformation out there. And before you, you see a couple of the Laura radio models that I've gone over in my shorts in the past. But it's time for a quick truth bomb. There's a TikToker by the name of Eurothrottle who's claiming that Meshtastic and Laura radios are a secret network for criminals. That's flat out misleading. Today, I'm going to calmly explain what Laura really is, what Meshtastic really does, and why this panic is harmful to hobbyists, hikers, everyday people, anyone who likes resilient communication. Let's start out with Meshtastic facts, not fear. False claims about technology spread really fast. People hear encrypted and assume criminal, off rip. That's not how tech policy, radio bands, or real users work. I'm not here to attack anyone. I'm just here to protect a community and replace fear with facts. That's all I'm trying to do. This isn't anything else. This is just because constantly people believe his mouth garbage because, well, they aren't informed. What is Laura? Whew. Laura is a modulation method. Basically, the way a radio sends data over long distances using chirp spread spectrum. It's a physical layer technology patented by Semtec, used for long range, low power communication. It's ideal for sensors, trackers, and even messaging where cell phone coverage is absent. It's not a secret protocol. It's not a dark network. It's a radio modulation technique that is used openly across IOT devices. I mean, a lot of IOT, all of these are IOT devices. So now that we've gone over LoRa being long range and low power and it's a form of communication, let's move on to what is Meshtastic. What's Meshtastic's purpose, its mission, its design? Uh, for example, here's a LilyGo T-Beam. LilyGo is really, really, really nice IoT company. They have some of the coolest products ever, like the T-Deck, different variations of the T-Deck, uh, the, the T-Echo, that's a T-Echo, that's a T-Echo core, and my favorite, which I've had for years now, the T-Beam. <sighs> Meshtastic is an open source, community-driven project. Okay, that's, that's, that's just what it, it's, it's, it's not some secret underground network. It runs on inexpensive LoRa radios. All of these are Meshtastic LoRa radios that are pretty inexpensive. And like, uh, I mean, honestly, the, the, the these are uh, Rockland um, Wise Blocks. That's a Wise Block Mini. And these LoRa, like, like this, this T-Beam, it won't cost you more than like 30 bucks. And having a off-grid communicator like it, like like a T-beam is awesome. This is one of my favorite lower radios because I think it's one of the most powerful ones out there. <sighs> so it runs on inexpensive lower radios and it creates an off-grid mesh network over like short text messages, GPS, location sharing, and just basic telemetry. So basically think of each one of these devices being a cell phone tower and they all connect with each other. And one sends a message, it'll ping off the other, ping off the other, ping off the other. Now, just because your device has a GPS doesn't mean that everyone can see your location. You can turn that off. And that is as simple as just that. It's not like, oh, I turned it off. Now I, n now nobody can see me. Yes, nobody can see you, but it's, it's it, you didn't just commit a criminal act. You're, you're not some, you're not, you're not anything. You just turned off your location. Some people don't want to, even if you had your location on, there wouldn't be a super accurate reading. And most of these devices, except for this device, connect to your phone. So you have this radio, and this radio is like a key into the network. Without this key, you can't access that network. So you're creating a, a mesh network to send short messages, and it's explicitly built for like hikers, campers, emergency backup, hobbyists, uh, tech enthusiasts who just want to communicate with each other when cell phone networks fail or if cell phone networks fail or if, um, let's just say, 
You just wanted, this is the same way people used to have ham radios. Why did people have ham radios? They, I mean, for a lot of reasons, but what I'm saying is it's essentially the same thing. Now in the US, we use the 915 sub gigahertz band and other countries they use whatever protocol they use. I think China uses 433. What it comes down to is this is not some device to access a criminal network. Could you hypothetically use this in a criminal way? You could use anything as a criminal in, for, in a criminal way. You could use a goddamn stick in a criminal way. You could, you could stab somebody with a fork and that would be in a criminal way. There are a lot of things. To think of these things as keys to a criminal underground is flat out stupid. The, the project is public. The code is public. The community, all visible, all public. It's like, like, like a off, you know those, um, those preppers? Preppers love this stuff. You, not this is, doesn't mean this device is for you know doomsday preppers or anything of the sort it just means that there are people who want to basically communicate in a way that isn't on cell phones some people don't want to be tracked by you know whatever they some people just want privacy this offers all of that and i have personally gone hiking in i've communicated with people who are also hiking and service was complete but so these help a lot, especially in situations where hikers could go missing. If hikers go missing and they have a LoRa radio and their project, you know, their, their 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 GPS is on, or and they're letting people know their location. I mean, the general area of where they are. Then that's really really cool. Now let's move on to encryption. What MeshTastic does and what MeshTastic doesn't do. <sighs> Two important truths about MeshTastic encryption, okay? One, MeshTastic supports channel encryption and more recent releases added public key, uh, public key cryptography for direct messages so messages can be encrypted between intended parties, okay? So, yes, like they, they you, you do have, you there since the new update, you got public keys, private keys. You could essentially create your own network there are, I mean, there's possibility. There's a lot of cool features. Now, two, historically, MeshTastic channels used to have a pre-shared key scheme and a default key existed, which meant privacy depended on, privacy depended on operators changing keys and configuring things responsibly. So, so in short, MeshTastic offers a real encryption method, but like any other tool, its privacy depends on how users set it up. Encryption exists, but default configs can be weak. So the best practice is to generate and share your own keys if you wanted, you know, super, super encrypted uh, message communication. That doesn't make it criminal. It just makes it secu a secure way to communicate with each other. And mind you, this isn't like people are sending paragraphs. You only have a limited, what is it, 150 characters, I believe. It's like old Twitter. Okay, moving on to real world scenarios and real world cases for MeshTastic, like people use MeshTastic for exactly the reasons it was designed for, for group communication on trails, GPS sharing and, you know, just backup communications during outages, low cost IoT telemetry. It's been used by outdoor groups and disaster prep communities and much, much more. Not criminal cartels. There's no evidence that MeshTastic's primary user base and design intent is for criminal activity. Literally, go on a MeshTastic Discord server, for example. If there's nothing but people like you and me who actually have questions about lots of different tech, not just LoRa radios, some of the coolest people, especially like I've hopped in on their group conversations sometime. They are some of the most intellectual, intelligent individuals I have ever spoken to and saying that these radios are bought and sold for drug cartels and underground networks is absolutely preposterous. Not only is it absolutely preposterous, you make us look bad by even saying that. There was no stigma about this. You just made this scenario in your head and you decided, yeah, well, this sounds good. This sounds cool. I, I don't know why you're doing this, Euro Throttle, but you need to stop because unfortunately 
you're a part of the same community that I am and a whole lot of others are. And we really genuinely love IoT devices like this. And we love the LoRa protocol. And we love Meshtastic. And with more software like MeshCore coming out now, it, you just, just stop. I don't know why you're doing this. I don't, I, I don't under, I, I feel like you're advertising to criminals and cartels. It's almost like you want them to start using these types of devices. Cause believe me when I say, believe me when I say, there is no criminal that is using, like, or not, not no, there's probably, there, there might be a few. I'm not gonna say there are none, but there are people there are bad people with guns. There are bad people with all types of bad stuff. You could run a scenario about anything being bad, like I said again. But what I'm saying is, you have so many LoRa radios, as do I. Why are you demonizing something that you're also a fan of? You, you make the entire IoT community look like a bunch of criminals. And he doesn't just stop on LoRa radios. I mean, he demonizes devices like the Flipper Zero and much much, much more. Here's the reality. Any communication tool can be abused. Email, signal, uh, a goddamn ham radio, even regular cell phones. That doesn't make the tool a criminal network. The accusation that Meshtastic is a secret network that cartels use requires evidence, server logs, arrests linked to use, and not just like one or two, like multiple arrests or something, confirmed malicious campaigns, anything. You're just making claims. I've checked community documentation and mainstream reporting. There is no credible evidence that Meshtastic is designed or used primarily for organized crime or some whatever drug lord bullcrap that you're trying to spew on people. Let's be honest here. Meshtastic is not a replacement for emergency services or for, for fully like untraceable comms. The mesh can relay packets through intermediate nodes. Those relays are untrusted carriers unless you set private keys. For extremely sensitive comms, you should use tools that offer audited end-to-end -end encryption and proven metadata protections and follow operational security. Like, like just, the, what, his claims are complete BS. So why am I making this video? I'm making this video because I want you, the watcher, the IoT enthusiasts, to get it involved, the tech enthusiasts, the tech community, the IoT community. If you care about how you use your devices and you like these devices, and you just started, even if you just started getting to the, into the hobby, if you care about this topic, do three things. Do three things when you see fear mongering like this, okay? One, ask for evidence. Specific claims need specific sources. Two, share the project docs and reputable coverage that Meshtastic website and technical articles. Don't let somebody just spew garbage. Three, demonstrate actual use. Show a short demo of setting up a channel, generating a key, sending a message, fax, demonstration beats rumors. You've seen his videos where he shows you how far the communication is between radios and how far you can basically create a network. Yes. You can create a network like that. That's the purpose of those radios. But, uh, like, uh, what is it? What is it? What is, the, what is that old saying? Abuse equals intent, okay? It's all about intent. People are not buying these devices so that they can commit crimes and be a part of some, some whatever underground you're trying to make it sound like. Finally, labeling an open source hobbyist project as a criminal network harms people. It harms hikers. It, har it harms makers. And it, it, it honestly, it harms first responders as well who rely on resilient comms. If you want to criticize tech, critique its design and security with evidence. If you want to spread fear, at the very least, be honest about your evidence. I've linked primary sources. Check them out. If you want a short demo script or on-screen graphics to use this video, I'll include a ready-to-run demo in the future because 
th this what's what's going on is new people are discovering this network through his platform and they believe the garbage that they hear and these devices are amazing like the t-deck is a standalone device. You don't need to connect it to your phone, and that's really cool. This is the first T deck. I'm actually, I love this T deck. In fact, I've had this since, since my soldering was terrible. Like, like I, I absolutely love this T deck. And plus, I like the Arabic keyboard, uh, the the Vision Master 2.9, the Wise Block, the Vision Master 2.1, the Helltech Tracker with the built-in GPS, uh, the the. The T Echo is one of the most successful LoRa radios that to ever exist. The Wise Block Mini, which is one of my favorites, to be honest. Like this is my enclosure for the Wise Block, actually, and I I, I love this uh, this enclosure. But my home base node, being the T Beam, like people are really into this hobby. So when people try to demonize a hobby and try to put this weird, dirty veil over it as if they're speaking out for the entire community is absolutely absurd. And I urge you guys that if when you see garbage like this, you 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 stand up for the for the community, stand up for IoT devices, stand up for IoT manufacturers like Lilygo and Helltech and M5 Stack because you could use anything with ill intent. Anything. Just please, please please stay informed and please we can't, as a community, let stupid stuff spew out of stupid people's mouths like this. This is insane.